Jay Hall. I'm uh, an audiologist. I'm Bob Margolis. I'm an audiologist. When I run into young audiologists, not necessarily students, but young audiologists, they're always groaning about the future of audiology. And they see there's a lot of threats, and they don't view them as challenges, like over-the-counter hearing aids and big box dispensing. Mm -hmm. There are always predictions that are... <laughs> Dire predictions. ...that our field is in trouble. We're going to be eaten up by hearing aid dispensers or by otolaryngologists, and none of that has happened. The future is, looks very bright if you just look at it from the point of view of the demographics of hearing loss. The population is growing and aging, and that increases the need for our services much faster than our profession is responding to it. Mm -hmm. There are not enough audiologists to provide the services that are needed. So the challenge is going to be, how do we meet that need with the resources that we have and one answer to that is automation. Which brings up an, another uh, very important point, the uh, inadequate number of audiologists and the uh, overwhelming number of patients of all ages and all pathologies. And that's in the United States. Right. When you get outside of the United States to many countries, now you have uh, either no audiologist or uh, far too few to even mm. begin to address um, you know, the needs of the population. How do we address these countries where there might be one or two audiologists, usually who are in private practice, so they're not even seeing the vast mm -hmm. majority of people who need them? How do we address this? And it seems like automated uh, techniques such as the AMTAS system at least offers some hope. My interest started with, I want to make my clinic more efficient, mm -hmm. but now has become more focused on increasing access to services. This is something that we really can implement and trust going forward, and it really improves access for our uh, patients. We can then use those quality indicators to make good decisions about the next step in the patient's hearing journey. We took these candidate quality indicators and tested a bunch of people with conventional manual testing and the automated testing. And then by statistical analysis, we determined which ones are predictive of accuracy and which mm -hmm. ones are not. I mentioned that one of the quality indicators that didn't make the cut was age. Mm -hmm. We thought that age would be, a, and it turned out that it wasn't. To be honest with you, and I think you'll agree, I'm very happy to hear that. Yeah, you me know? too. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, anything that could be automated should be automated. We have to focus more on patient care and less on performing procedures. The whole world is moving toward automation to make things more efficient and more cost effective and more accurate. We really need to put a lot of effort into making sure that every graduate of an AUD program in the United States views automated audiometry as an essential component of their clinic. In other words, they wouldn't even think of operating a, a clinic without it.